Big <laughs> shout out to Bean working espresso down in Skyring Terrace, Newstead. Best Hook. coffee in the game. Best absolute coffee in the game. Hooking the platform podcast and any listeners up with a 10% discount. Shout out. Shout out to Yol- Yolanda. Yolanda. That was a mouthful. Their coffee's real fucking good. Get Best it. coffee in the game. By far. Just opened up Skyring Terrace. You can order ahead and mention the platform podcast for a 10% discount. Be bad and Brandon. <laughs> Welcome to the Platform Podcast. We are your hosts. We didn't do that last time. I know, but it was trying to be bad. Yeah, well, Brandon Greco. You definitely ruined that one. You guys are now formal that I'm here. I appreciate it. I know. We've actually that was <laughs> a lot more formal than Anton's. Yeah. No, we did nothing. But no, protocol. Was, pff, I mean, we actually had protocol. It was good. That was good, Anton's. He can talk. Fuck yeah, boy can talk. Now, to my left, if you're watching, or if you're listening, also to your left. If you're watching, is it on your right? Not Jason? your right, their right. Mind blown. Right. Yes. Good pickup. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Anyway, so to your right, you'll hear the your lovely voice. My left, your right. <laughs> Tia Marks, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. There, yeah, there's an applause. Thanks. See, that's why we missed Cambo mm. already. A first audience member. Shout out, Cambo. Mm, first audience member. We will be opening up in the near future. Mm. So, Tia? Are you ready? Yes. It's, no, this. maybe. We'll see. <laughs> well, Did you listen to any episodes before this? Do I you have, know what's and, coming? Um, I did think this through, and I probably forgot everything I thought about. Yeah, 21 words. Who you are and what you do. As you know, because you've listened, he you counts the sounds, the noises, the words, all the things, starting now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, owner of Bionic Fitness, purple belt in Jiu Jitsu, ex powerlifter. Twelve words. Grew up in China. Entrepreneur since I was sixteen. Wait, that's nineteen. Two words left. I'm good with that. That's three <laughs> words, but we'll take it. Well done, twenty-two. It's actually probably one of our closer ones. I'm really impressed good. with that. Now, that was a very quick snapshot of what you do, and I've sounds known... Sounds like you do a lot. It sounds like you do an awful lot, in a good way. on each one of them. Yeah, we could, actually. Do you know Chinese? I've lost a fair bit of it being here, but as a teenager, I spoke a decent amount. Yeah, wow. Well. But, uh... Because you're, like, let's explore that firstly. Like, you grew up... You were born in Australia? Yeah, so I was born in Sydney, grew up in Newcastle until I was 11, and then I moved to Shanghai, China when I was just about 10, 12, and I moved back to, I moved to Brisbane when I was 18. Wow. So it's just where my dad got transferred to next. With work? Yeah, with work. And then he went off to Dubai for a couple of years, and then we stayed here, and the family liked it, so we made it the hub. Yeah, see. So, yeah. What was it like in China as a bloody 12-year-old going over? And so, completely different world. Uh, when we first moved there, a lot of people haven't, a lot of Chinese haven't seen white people before. Wow. So, I, we went with four of my siblings, and my two brothers are probably about your guys' size, like quite big, mm-hmm. and everyone wouldn't stop looking at them. They couldn't stop staring at oh, their gosh, feet. So. Yeah, she, like I love how you said we were big in that, but anyways, continue. <laughs> well, since you guys can't see them, they're massive. They're huge. Oh, particularly Brenda. <laughs> That's why. Um, so yeah, completely different experience, but the craziest thing was there's no clubbing and drinking age. So at 13, it was extremely regular for every teenager to be in nightclubs every single weekend. Really? Yeah. So you could go to the 7-Eleven down the shop and buy alcohol. You were walking to any nightclub you wanted. They didn't check ID. So on the weekends, instead of whatever teenagers do here, you're in proper nightclubs getting completely drunk. Wow. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah, so the interesting thing was some parents were really strict and some parents were really relaxed. My parents were quite relaxed with it, but I had two older brothers that were always there, so <laughs> it didn't, like, they always knew I was looked after. Yeah. So everyone would stay at my house and then they'll go out from my house because my parents didn't care. But when I was about 14, the rule was I had to be back by midnight. Then as I got older, I got to stay out a little bit longer. So, you know, damn, I have to be back by midnight at 14 from a nightclub. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> I was like, I don't remember staying up till. Did like, you come home like, to Australia any, like, in that period and you're like, oh, let's go hit a club with your mates and you're like, oh, hang on, I can't do yeah, that. I ca- no, well, I came back at 14 and then I met up with some old school friends I knew as a kid and they're like, oh, it's Friday night, I want to go drive around. And I was like, what do you mean you're going to go drive around? They're like, we're just going to drive places. I'm like, where? Why? What do you mean drive places? <laughs> yeah. So it's just 
completely different world. What a, yeah, that is insane. Yeah, but one thing uh, when I was about 16, my parents were like, if you keep going out clubbing, you're not going to enjoy it when you get older. And I was like, never. And then I came back to Australia at 18, went out a few times and did Don't not do enjoy it. it. And then <laughs> I got into fitness. Yeah. So I was like, this is boring. Let's go try something new. I feel like you got that clubbing phase out earlier before everyone. Yeah. And also clubbing in Australia is quite boring. So when I was six, I don't know how much Ben has told you about me, but when I was 16, I started my own business in China and I started running nightclub, nightclub events for teenagers. So what I do is I go to these like multi-million dollar nightclubs that were completely empty. So Chinese people will buy nightclubs to show off to their friends, but they'll just be empty and bummed with stuff. So they have a thing called 100 RMB, all you can drink. So it's about $20, all you can drink the whole night. I know. Now then Australia will have a higher death rate with alcohol. Yeah. But so what I do is I'll go to these nightclubs that were penthouse gorgeous nightclubs and I'll say, what's the cheapest you can give it to me? And usually it's about 60 RMB. So I charge 100 and I'll take 40% of the door and I'll fill it with two to 300 teenagers and I do that every single month. And then I'll get some of my friends that were DJs and I'll get some of my friends that were dancers and then we'll just make a massive party and we'll call it Shanghai Clubbers and we'll just take over like massive penthouse gorgeous nightclubs once a month and throw like big ass parties. So How much money are you making on each one of these events? I can't That's remember now, but I'll walk with like my pockets were just stacked of cash because it's just full cash in hand. <sighs> and, um, and then when I was 16, I decided I wanted to start DJing. So I spent, used some money to go buy my own DJ set. And then I'll tell nightclubs that I was in my 20s. And then I ended up DJing in four countries before I turned 18. That's so. sick. Where All did the you countries? DJ? I did uh, Bali, Cambodia, Thailand, and China. A few places in China. Cambodia. So I did come back to Australia and then I did DJ in a few places. I did like the Chalk Hotel when it was apparently cool and a couple before it shut down. <laughs> it was once cool when I moved here and um, a couple like basic places, but the DJ platform was on the ground. I had to start up again. Yeah. Everyone, that's just the Australian drunks are just a different level of drunk. <laughs> The guys are a little bit more seedy here. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, didn't enjoy it as much. That's uh, yeah. So just a quick snapshot, uh, if you don't mind. How old are you now? 28. So you've been, as you said before, obviously an ultra entrepreneur for, since you were 16. That's 12 years you've been running your own. Because you run your own business now. And yes, I've always run my own business. That's insane. Like what, what kicks out of the idea when you're 16 in Shanghai going, I'm going to go boss this? Uh, well, my brother was five years older than me and he was managing nightclubs. So he was actually a flair bartender. He moved there at 16 and started bartending. And then he moved to America and Canada and started competing in flair bartending. And What's then he that, came uh, where they throw bottles around and in yeah. fancy ways oh, and make cool fancy cocktails. Cool. Yeah, that, okay. So he was actually like really good with it and traveled and won a lot of like awards and things like that. And then he came back and started managing a nightclub and then I was working with him. And then he was just, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to start throwing little parties at this nightclub. It was this massive one. It was probably about the size of the Met. So it wasn't wow. a little nightclub. They had, we actually had um, Ghostface Killer play there and a bunch of other like big artists come. It was a little bit uncomfortable. I met uh, Ghostface Killer and like the Wu-Tang Clan. And I was with the manager and I was about, I think I was like 16, 17 at the time. <laughs> and he's trying to like take me home. And I'm like, I'm a teenager. <laughs> like, and I'm there in like the back room hanging out with the whole group. And they'll obviously think I'm in my 20s. And I was like, yeah, I should probably go. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized I'm quite young. Um, but yeah, so I started just seeing the back end of how it worked. And I knew a lot of people. My brothers were quite popular with the Western community. So I met a lot of friends. And then, yeah, just one thing led to another. And you were just like, fuck it, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah, it was just go to places, talk to the Chinese people. So I could have conversations. I could like do deals. Yeah. And then, yeah. So I think it was because of my brother that he got me into it all. That's insane. So then coming back to Australia, you obviously try to do it over here. And then, how, like, obviously, I know you in the fitness world. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've coached you in the past in powerlifting. And where did the fitness come from? Because so, they're like completely two different worlds. Yeah, so I actually started a internet marketing company when I first started. I came here and I was telling people that one day you're going to see like a Facebook logo on like a menu and you're going to see everyone's going to have to, you're going to look at a Facebook page before you look at a website. And everyone thought I was crazy. And I was telling businesses, don't worry about a website, you need to work on social media. So I was actually um, going to businesses and they will pay me and I was teaching them how to use social media. But that time I was like, how to set up a Facebook page. Instagram didn't exist then. And how to um, set up your website. And I used to build websites. And then I went to university and I was like, I feel like I should get a degree or something. So mm. I went and did just my first year of business mm. and ended up meeting a young Turns girl there. You knew every, way more than that <laughs> it was, first it year was, already it was you. useless. It, they <laughs> were talking about newspaper and magazines and things like that. So at this that's time... That's like uh, 10 years sir, ago. That stuff's yeah. dead. Yeah. <laughs> 
fuck? That's 10 years ago. Yeah. So. Wow. At this time, um, I was actually super into the Joe Bogan experience when I was 18 years old. Uh, I was one of his first, I swear, it's like first 2,000 followers. When I used to watch it, there was like maybe 200 views on each video. And the only reason I used to watch it is because they were sponsored by the Fleshlight and they used to do all the advertisements in front of people. So at 18, I got to listen to grown men talk about sex. I was going to say like Fleshlight, the Fleshlight. Yeah, the yeah, Fleshlight, yeah, sex yeah. toy. You're in charge of them marketing and advertising. No, 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 no. I used to just listen to them oh. a lot when I was 18. Mm -hmm. So I started um, to listen to them and then I heard about Jiu-Jitsu but I knew nothing of it. And then my brothers took me to my first jiu-jitsu class and I hated it. <laughs> it was in the middle of summer. It was disgusting. I had old dudes sweating on top of me. <laughs> um, so we started like, we were drilling and then we got to roll. And then I had this old dude roll me and then he put me in a rear naked choke and I didn't know what it was. No one told me that you're supposed to tap. Oops. So I'm there <laughs> getting to choked out. I'm, all, I'm going to sleep and I'm there like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I'm like 18, uncomfortable. And then I was like, I remember listening to the podcast and they seen something about tapping. So I like hit the floor and he let go. And I was just like, I, I almost went out. It was really scary and uncomfortable. But so I could not go back to juice after that. I hated it. But then I went to university and I met a young girl and she was 16 at the time. And she was from Russia. Now, in this town in Russia that she was from, if you were, like, if you were raped, sorry, um, if you were raped, the, um, a lot of men won't marry you and you can't find a husband. So her family ended up sending her over to Australia because they didn't want to, they want to make sure that she was quite pure when she goes back to get married. It's a little bit messed up. But her first two months in Brisbane, she was walking through the park in the city and was jumped by two guys. Oh, yeah, fuck. So she was one of my good friends at the time. She told me a story and she just told me that she completely froze. And she told me the whole thing, quite amount of detail. And I was thinking, what would I do? So I've got three older brothers and I've always assumed that they're always going to be around. Yeah. But I, was, I think I was about 19 at this time and I was like, okay, they're not going to be there if something like that happens. Like I was not around them as much anymore. So then I decided to go try jiu-jitsu again, this time in the winter. <laughs> so, <laughs> and in a gi, and um, I enjoy a lot more. So I got into jiu-jitsu, boxing and Muay Thai, and then I realized I was so weak, I could not do a push-up. I tried to, uh, I couldn't even barbell, I couldn't press the barbell for a set of five. I ended up using five kilo dumbbells and my arms were shaking. And then from that, I started lifting and one thing led to another. That's how I got into fitness. Fucking yeah. hell, that's a, there's a lot in that, in yeah. <laughs> that tangent. Yeah. Fuck. So if you are, if uh, my, a 16 to 18 year old me said like looked at me now I would not say it's the same person like fake hair extensions fake eyelashes long nails always wore high heels completely different person I can imagine being sweaty and rolling and touching strange men like that and yeah that's insane and so, still rolling today yeah I'm still rolling today and how so in that obviously you got into fitness and when did you get your like let's let's try and create a bit of a timeline now so when did you go to uni uh, I actually dropped out after the first year, but when I was 18, 19, oh, somewhere there. And then when did you do, your, like, you got, so is that three and four? Yeah, I did them five, six years ago. Oh, that's how we ago. met. You shadowed me. No, so I shadowed oh. you for my ASCA level one. Oh, So nice. I was already, uh, had my cert three and four for like two years at that point, a year yep. or two. Yeah. Oh, that's how we met. I remember this now. It's coming back to me. And yeah, then that was your favorite, your favorite shadower you've ever had. You loved every moment of it. I will neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> I've had a lot more people shadow me since yourself, so you don't know. Um, okay, so you got your set three and four, and then now you run, uh, obviously you said bionic fitness. Yeah. And strong, happy, healthy. Yes. Explain those two. So strong, happy, healthy was originally my PT brand, and then I did a lot of YouTubing and online things with that. Um, so I actually kind of backed off the YouTube quite a bit when I went into doing Bionic Fitness because I just couldn't put my time everywhere and I had to figure out what was the thing I was going to grow the most. Mm -hmm. So my YouTube did go quite well. Um, I have one video that I do not recommend anyone watching, but it's got now 4.6 million views. Oh, well, Can we, uh, what's the video just called? Just throw that in right now. Oh. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> it's the underwear one, isn't it? It's the underwear one. What happens? No, okay. So what I was doing is I was trying to make a video a day because YouTube loves it if you post every day. Yep. And I was just trying to come up with random videos just to like – plug something in for every day. So I was like, I want to talk about what underwear is the best to wear underneath leggings yep. that don't show lines. 
So this time, um, actually, my thyroid was playing. Well, this is when my thyroid started, so my skin was breaking out. I was gaining weight at this time. It was a very bad quality video, and I'm in like Kmart talking about what underwear to wear, and yeah. somehow it went viral. Wow. 4.6 million views viral, and the amount of messages and emails I've gotten of asking how much for my underwear is insane. <laughs> like, it's like just, sorry, how much? How much to buy my underwear? Yes. What? From that like, video. From that video, like I'm what do you talking reckon we could, hundreds. What, what are they offering? Like, no one ever put a price. Oh. I'm surprised. But you Dude, just, you could have people sold your... Were, uh, yeah, I don't know. No, I'm you not going to make I don't think you understand the opportunity here. As an entrepreneur, I'm really ashamed. Mm. I know. You, like, could have bought $2 underwear from Kmart. Say you wore yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. I could have got you to wear them. I yeah. would have, too. I'll give you, like, You would be a premium on You walk around wearing this underwear for me, and then we sell it underneath my name. I literally would have... Like, we could have made a killing. Yeah. I'm very disappointed. Um, I do apologize. Oh, it's not over. We can still do this. It's so... <laughs> The video is still up and it's still getting views today. So technically, we could still. Well, you we're going to wear the underwear. I can, I, that's 4.6 million. It's huge. That is huge. It's a, it's a terrible it's video. It's almost as many as we get. It's a sure. shocking video. <laughs> <laughs> that's, just, that's just not true right now. Uh, okay, so you strong, happy, healthy. Yeah. Your PT brand. Bionic Fitness. Now, that's one of the reasons we really wanted to get you on here is, is talk about that because that's very... It's very interesting. It's very very interesting, but it's a very new concept still, especially in Australia. It's massive in, I think, Brazil? Uh, no, in Germany. And also, yeah, it's grown a lot in Brazil. Yeah. But Germany is originally where it's from. So in Europe, in Germany, they've got one studio per every 1,500 people. So literally every street, there's a studio that really? does this. Yeah, so Bionic Fitness, we use full body electro muscle stimulation. So kind of like a TENS machine, but a full body suit. So instead of just kind of isolating a muscle, you can do your whole body at once. Mm -hmm. So the reason I got into this was when I was powerlifting, I didn't realize that with when I was going through all my thyroid stuff, that if you have a thyroid issue, that the lining of your pelvic floor actually thinnens mm -hmm. and that can cause a prolapse of your pelvic floor. So during deadlifting, my pelvic, my pelvic floor actually ended up dropping, which is similar to what happens when you have kids. So I couldn't powerless anymore I couldn't deadlift without having to run to the bathroom or wear a pad or mm. have some very embarrassing moments in front of Brandon mm. that I'm very appreciative that uh, it was in front of him and not in front of a lot of other people yeah I'm pretty easy yeah mm. he just kind of like laughed it off and he was like no we're good that's a proud coach moment um so <laughs> well it was <laughs> a proud coach well the the thing was it was something that it does happen yeah. in powerlifting it's not ideal like yeah. it, it, there's ways we can work around and then mm. the more i guess um re uh, more research the more understanding a coach can be of that like it's it, if, if it does happen it's no. not it's not a judge like you don't yeah. judge the person for it. it's not their fault necessarily but yours was a bit of a different issue because like, we couldn't treat it the same way i would treat like you know someone else if that happens she's like cool it's pelvic floor yeah. with your thyroid issue as you explained before there was a bit more to it yeah so before every powerlifting session i dehydrated myself like two three hours and still would ha still couldn't like somehow there's still liquid we, d we definitely don't recommend that but <laughs> does not equate to better performance <laughs> <laughs> it was the only thing i could do like yeah yeah it was not fun especially when we trained in the middle of the summer in the in a shed like oh, it was just so hot i was so dehydrated that hot sweat box yeah so but Anyway, pelvic floor issue. Then I went and saw a couple specialists and did lovely internal exams. This is when mm. you're laying on a bed and a lady is sticking her fingers up you and you're doing breathing and squeezing exercises oh. to make sure you're doing the right job. It's not as enjoyable as it sounds. Yeah, right. It's quite quite uncomfortable. You're trying to not make eye contact, quite trying to look at a wall. Is there general chit chat in those moments? Yeah, you actually try and don't yeah. like silence. So yeah. there's quite a bit of chit chat. I feel like you try. <laughs> what day's been day? Just. <laughs> What have you been up to? Yeah. Do you do this often? Like, <laughs> do you enjoy your job? <laughs> just a little Smart. bit of a mix. Anyway, so I did all the specialists and all the treatments for about a year, and I just kind of kept lifting because I love lifting. Mm. And then I did hear that if I did keep lifting that and I don't address my issue, then um, there's, if I have kids, I probably might end up having to get a sling or something put in one day, and I didn't really want to go through that. It sounds pretty horrific. Mm. So... Then with, um, so this EMS stuff, my business partner actually had it at our gym randomly sitting there for about six years. He used it on himself and a couple of clients and he's like, hey, if you want, can you try these machines? And if you like it, I'll teach you how to do it on your clients. And I was like, okay, I'm a little bit old school. I think this looks really dumb and silly, but I'll give it a go. 
So I did a session and then I was like, saw in the abs and the arms and I was like, oh, this is strange. I didn't expect to feel anything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so I do a few more sessions. And within three sessions, I realized I wasn't running to the bathroom. I was lifting like wow. without having to go do things. And I was just like, that's so strange. I wasn't doing my exercise anymore. I didn't change anything about like my routine and my diet. So then one day I was waiting for a client and then I saw a research booklet on his table of all like science studies for the EMS device. Mm. Then I saw one on pelvic floor and I was like, oh my God. So I started doing a couple more sessions and then within a few sessions, like I could sneeze without an issue. I could like all my, all my issues and fears was like all gone. So then I was like, okay, this is a thing. And then I started doing it. And then the amount of women it's changed is insane. Mm. So I have one lady actually who came to me because she has double knee replacements and she can't train. So the good thing about this device is you can activate all your muscles without putting any strain on your joints or ligaments. So we have a lot of people come in after an injury or whilst they're in like a brace or a cast or something like that, or they just finished the surgery, um, or they can't train their like quads or glutes or something properly. Mm -hmm. So this lady came in with double knee replacements and she did probably about three or four sessions at this point. And she told me that for her whole life, for 20 years, she had a surgery about 20 years ago for a sling put into a pelvic floor and it failed. So she used to wear adult diaper every night because she can't get to the bathroom quick enough. And she's oh. in her seventies and because of her knee replacement, she can't move fast enough. So she has to sleep with a yeah, diaper. Fuck. And she said, she's done, I think about three, four sessions. She's like, the only thing I've changed is doing this and I can get to the bathroom in time. I, can, I don't have to wear a diaper at night. She's like, she's like, does that, does that help you poke a lot? I'm like, yeah, that's one of the things. And that's then incredible. now she's completely free. Like, that's amazing. No You've issue whatsoever. Yeah, it's just, and she's a little bit like upset that no one's ever told her about this in the past. Mm. But now they actually have four pelvic floor and EMS device that looks, looks like shorts mm. that does very similar things just on the core and the legs. Yeah, that's massive. Mm -hmm. though. Yeah. Like that's a that's a huge thing, and especially obviously not just our industry, but that's huge. That is a massive, drastic change in just a couple of sessions. Mm. Yeah, we're all good. That's all. <laughs> so now with from that, you've opened up. Is it two studios? Yeah. So we now have a studio in Eagle Street. So cool. this device is getting really popular amongst like um, like. Uh, professionals and people that are quite busy mm -hmm. so it's like a 20 minute workout you only yep. can do it twice a week because otherwise you're overtrained. Um, so you come in and out we do a two parts to it a fast twitch muscle fibers part so it's your strength and then slow twitch which is your endurance yep. and then after 20 minutes you're pretty much exhausted you do not want to go any longer so you're kind of uh, just standing there wearing this thing no so we do full exercise so the biggest argument against ems devices is the fact that it doesn't train the movement so we do make sure we move we do make sure we squat and lunge and do yep. push-ups and we do rows because otherwise people are learning to get the strength in their muscles but they're not understanding how to use them mm. so we do make sure we move quite a bit and also it's boring yeah. sitting there for 20 do you minutes have resistance with weights as well or is it just yeah body so at our too? studio we do weights with it mm -hmm. We actually do play around with it and do like bodybuilding style workouts with it on. Cool. Um, so uh, they used it in the last Generation Iron 2 documentary, the Mr. Olympic documentary. They oh, were really? all using it. Yeah, so they were using it on their biceps for curls. And a lot of people started using it before they go on stage to get a pump because they're quite dehydrated. So if you do it, like your veins are popped, you're completely pumped after. That's so cool. I did not realize that it had, I guess, ventured into the, the world of like, uh, like bodybuilding and that yeah, sort of Yeah, Mr. Olympia has gone crazy over it. Really? Yeah, so like Usain Bolt used it for his whole um, prep for the Olympics. Like so many athletes have started using it. All the soccer teams in Europe use it now. Like it's massive. But Australia is just a little bit further behind. We're a lot more skeptical of things, like as was I when I first did it. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things you have to just feel and try mm -hmm. and then people in them, yeah essentially. but it's not for it's not for everyone like i had a client come in recently that he turned out a little bit she's like ow ow i'm like do you do exercise like if you're not if you're not okay with being uncomfortable mm. it's like it's a pain but it's not a bad pain mm. so some people respond through giggling with it so it's kind of like tickling that when you get tickled you know it's a pain but your body knows it's a safe pain so you just want to do tickling so this it's a pain but your body doesn't know what to do so some people sometimes like the biggest muscular dudes are the biggest gigglers and they're like <laughs> it's painful but they love because they don't know what to do mm. so uh, it's definitely a it's definitely a unique feeling but it feels like it feels really good mm. yeah and what's the second session? So fast twitch fibers on the first session. What and then slow twitch. slow twitch. Yeah, the so second. the second one, I've even just stood there and cranked as high as I could take it and I got my heart rate to about 120 from just standing there letting it just do my muscle fibers. 
Wow. Yeah. So it's just then they get puffed. So you only, you only last about five, 10 minutes in that part because mm. otherwise you just wrecked. But you become a lot more efficient with your fibers. So we actually have a lot of clients that are older. So as you get older, as you probably know, that you start to lose your fast switch muscle fibers mm. or the ability to activate them. So we have a lot of clients that they'll max the machine at the start because they're old and they don't, they can't like actually get those fibers working. And then within a couple of sessions or weeks or months, they've got their numbers way down and they can actually like feel all their muscles. They move a lot quicker. They're a lot stronger. How would that, like I'm thinking, is there much research on that translating to people who, you know, like in strength training have trouble, not necessarily feeling it, but you know, how would that affect someone? I don't believe there's things, let's just use a, I rambled there. I apologize to all the listeners, but let's think, people say I have lazy glutes now like yeah you don't have lazy glutes in a squat they just don't work in the order that you need them to is there like any sort of research where people have used the EMS EMS EMS, and then like gone back and said oh it's helped me in this aspect I don't know if there's there probably is like actual research but we definitely do have people come in with lazy glutes Mm. I have one young girl who cannot physically activate her core she's been to so many physios and specialists she's in so much back pain because her core is just non-existent Mm. like she can't bend over and pick things up because for some reason she can't activate a core so within a couple of sessions she can activate a core for just like maybe like five ten seconds at a time but before she can never actually activate her core mm. so it does definitely so do in the like sense that. it helps create like a, a, a neural pathway to the point because when people start to feel something they can more associate with yeah it. they probably don't know what it what it feels like to, to begin like with. tense yeah yeah wow that's actually really cool. Yeah. So I didn't realize there was so much more, like, I guess, application to it. Yeah. So there's about 15 to 20 studios now in Australia. Um, when you started, there was only one. Yeah. Yours. So we had one main competitor <laughs> and now he's got, a, they've got about 12 studios, mostly around Sydney and Perth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then now we're still the only ones in Brisbane and there's one in the Sunshine Coast as well. Yeah. There's like a little studio, but it's growing quite a bit. I was going to say, you've seen the demand for it. Like, yeah. um, come, look at these people are coming in, maybe skeptical, maybe not, but once they've used it, seen it, touched it, it's like, fuck. Right. Yeah, but most people that find out about us are usually either through referrals or friends, mm-hmm. or it's there's no someone overseas that's done it, or they've seen a celebrity overseas do it, that did it. So all the Victoria's yeah. Secret models have all started doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I better take a photo now before I forget. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's yeah cool. so now that's getting quite big everywhere else, more and more people are starting to come and yep. check it out. Yeah, that's cool. So, so for you, you'd be thinking you'd like to open another one? Is yeah, so our close? goal is 25 in the next few years. So we were supposed to open another four this year and then COVID. Classic COVID. COVID was a lot of fun for us. Thanks, COVID. So <laughs> we had to close. So our Tuong studio is pretty much back to normal. Our city studio is the one we had to build back up because it's in the offices. Yeah. So we're actually and in no an office in building. Yeah, and yeah. No, one's in the, no one's in the city. So a lot of our city clients have moved over towards us in Tuong because mm-hmm. they can drive. Yep. But... Uh, yeah, so we'll just see how COVID goes. The problem with COVID is uh, a lot of people think we're going to lock down again. So, so many people don't want to start something new thinking we're going to lock down, which is kind of silly in thinking if you if you know you're about to like go to prison, mm. are you just going to stay inside your house? Like, Shit. if you know you're about to lock down, wouldn't you take this opportunity to try and get as fit and healthy as possible, yeah. especially since we just had a health scare? Yeah. So, it's kind of... <laughs> but people take any excuse not to work but out and like not those, to um, get fit. excuse things. Yeah, excuses. What, what are they? Excuses. Mm. Oh, those things I used to tell myself all the time. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, this hurts, so I can't. Yeah, I've had plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're my favourite. They are. But now, okay, so let's talk. Where are you going to open next? Uh, we're actually thinking around this area, Newstead. Sick. So somewhere around Newstead next, somewhere a little bit further out. Um, mm. But we had a couple of people asking us to open up in places. We've had a fair few people in, like, approach us to be investors, but mm. we don't really want to go that route. We think we can do it ourselves. So it's That's just me and one other person. Yeah. Um, what causes this drive? That, that entrepreneur in you that just wants to grow and be more? Because and... you've done a lot, dude. Like in 12 years, you've done a lot. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's interesting. My mum says that my dad used to say he wants all his kids to be entrepreneurs when they grow up. So maybe he kind of pushed that into us, although I think I'm the only one that has kind of gone that way. (laughs) Yep. Um, I think also... What should Dad do? uh, An engineer. Damn. Civil engineer. So smart. Far out. And then, okay, 
But yeah. I think it's just being your own boss, choosing your own hours. You seem to work, you know, 20 times more hours for yourself than you ever would for someone else. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> you don't actually get a break, but you enjoy every moment doing it. Absolutely. Yep. It's, it's favorite, so much more rewarding. The good quote from Pete is, uh, you, you never need a day off if you enjoy what you do. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think I also like having full control over my own results, which is also why I didn't like team sports growing up because I don't like to rely on anyone. Whereas if I'm failing, it's because of me. If I'm not succeeding, it's because of me. So I'd rather... That's what kind of drew you to jiu-jitsu and powerlifting, I imagine. Yeah. You're fucking strong at it. One of my favourite memories of Tia was like, we were just training, not really prepping, and then I had a client pull out of a comp and I was like, oi, Tia, do this comp on two weeks' notice. And she ended up pulling 140 like a boss. That's fucking cool. I don't even think we... No, like, no, I think the conversation was Tito's comment. It's like, no. He's like, do the comment. Like, no. It's like, you're doing the comment. Like, okay. <laughs> that was more how the conversation went. It wasn't really... Did you pull 140? I'm in. Yes. Yeah, I, don't, I don't see what the problem is. I'm fine with it. Yeah, do you? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Real good. You should come back. I do miss it. Yeah. Oh, what's that? There we go. Yeah, I heard you're in. Just um, edit that bit where it said expel or something. Uh, out of the thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to get no. It should just say power lifter now. <laughs> 100%. But how's your health as well? Because you, you've battled with your thyroid issues for a long time. and Yeah, so the thyroid journey has definitely been a journey. It's been about... I think I met you when I just started going through the thyroid stuff. Mm. So when the thyroid thing first happened, I gained 25 kilograms of body fat in four months. Ooh. And I went to a doctor and I'm like... I'm gaining fat. I don't know what it is. And she's like, it's muscle. I'm like, muscle does not jiggle. I was like, I know it's not muscle. And she... Unless you're Terry Crews, <laughs> muscle doesn't jiggle. And she refused to test my blood. So I walked out and asked for another doctor straight away. What? And I found a doctor and he tested my blood. And then he gave me a full blood panel. And he's just like, oh, you're fine. And I'm like, I'm not fine. So I started Googling where my measurement should be. And I was definitely had thyroid issues. So then I went to a specialist and he looked at it and apparently I had absolutely no sex hormones, no thyroid, and my bloods were just terrible. But that was fine for doctor number two? So, yeah, that was fine for doctor number yeah, two. Yeah, great. I feel like Fuck, doctors... me off. Yeah, like, I feel like, <laughs> and I mean, I'm not a doctor by any stretch. Oh, You're a doctor. I'm doctor of gains. Yeah, but I just look at... You know, I, I was explained to this one day by a naturopath. Now, I don't necessarily buy into the full naturopathy and I feel well, sometimes it's a bit airy-fairy, but she explained to me in this way, like doctors look at a set range. Yeah. Mm. And naturopathy and naturopaths, they look at where they want you to sit to be an optimal human being. Yeah. And I think that's the difference. And I think that's a massive takeaway when you look at anything. Like there's a set range of things, but if you're at a lower end of that set range, you're still going to feel like shit. Yeah. So we want to be in that optimal range. And I'm sure that's when you started Googling, you kind of found out that that's where you really wanted to sit. And yeah. So that specialist finally gave me, he put me on natural thyroid hormone, which is directly from a pig's thyroid. So they Ooh. take it from a pig and they dry it. And it's more of a natural way to go into thyroid medication. But I did that for a little bit. It stopped some of the weight gain, um, but still all the symptoms were all there. And I went to, I think I've counted 16 different specialists over the last four years. And Fuck. the amount of medication, like now I'm on like 11 different tablets, just still trying to figure it out. I've lost most of my weight, but I've got about five, six kilos left to go to get to where mm. I was. And there's still a few symptoms, but I've gotten rid of most of it. But the thing is, it's just the amount of clients that I have that have like a little thyroid thing or a little bit of a medical thing, and they're not willing to do the research and not willing to actually find what's wrong with them and fix them is insane. Like, I literally won't stop until I've gotten a hold of it. Do they know what caused it? Because, like, I'm sure there's so many people out there and a, a, a lot of women who are dealing with that. Uh, stress. So uh, it was a mix between I was training powerlifting four or five times a week and jiu-jitsu four or five times a week, I think, and That's then conditioning. Mix. So That's I was doing yeah. 13 hard mm. training sessions a week. I think I remember telling Tia, like, <laughs> you're training too much. Yeah, and I definitely was under eating. I was probably eating, like... Mm. 2,000 max for 13 training sessions a week, and I was training hard. 2,000 calories a day maximum. Yeah. It's a bit short. Yeah, it was, a I, short. It was bad. But I'm the thing is, but. I was, uh, I had like a little bit of body fat left, and I really wanted to try and lose this last bit of body fat. And then obviously, it just one day just turned. And I was watching the scales, and it was going up, and I couldn't understand why it's going up. So, of course, scales are going up. I'm cutting my food down more. I'm mm. training harder, oh, and good. I'm just mm. shooting myself in the foot just over and over again. But you didn't know any better. 
yeah, I didn't know anything. I was doing what I thought I needed to do. So it was funny. I'll be watching the scales and I'll get to like 65 kilos. I'm like, I'm not letting you go over 65 kilos. And then I'll get to 70. I'm like, you are not going over 70. And then it just kept going up and up. And I stopped looking at 85 kilos. I was like, I'm not looking at scale anymore. But definitely went up a lot more after 85. But I was just... Fuck. Yeah, not having it. That would have sucked. Yeah, so it wh- sucked. Now, what are you tracking at calorie-wise? If you uh, track it I'm all. not tracking at the moment. I'm now working with um, ATP Science. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I went to their naturopath. So I went, my last specialist I went to, he was great. He actually put me on T3 now, mm-hmm. which is exactly what I needed because my T3 was, like my T4 wasn't converted to T3. Do you know much about yep. hormone and stuff? Yeah, cool. Johnny's like, yep, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, totally. Just smile away. <laughs> T3, yeah. Um, so, and he's just like, you're in range now. There's nothing else I can do. I'm like, well, I still don't feel 100%. I'm still having issues. So <sighs> then I decided to go try ATP science, try and mm. talk to a naturopath. And they're like, we want to get you optimal, which is like you said. So now, right now, I'm trying a couple of their different medication and I'm waiting till in two weeks to go do my next bloods yep. and we'll see what else we can do. ATP but, science came on into the supplement and kind of really changed things for the better, I feel. Yeah. Like their products are very much tailored towards becoming an optimal human, yeah. optimizing the human and understanding that we all should function at a very high level, not just physically, but also cognitively. Mm. Yeah. And, and then on a hormonal level, mm. their products are brilliant. Well, I was going to an um, endocrinologist at Green Slopes Hospital and he's like one of the best for thyroid. And then he's just like, oh, you're fine now. You're in a range. You can go to your Ugh. GP and they'll just give you, I'm like, this can't be the end. I was like, there has to be something else. And then at my gym, everyone was doing the gut health stuff and all the ATP things. And I was like, mm. I want to try their thyroid support product. So I decided the to just book teeth it. For teeth. Yeah. Yeah. No. Three, four, two, three, four, yeah, three, that's two, right. or, yeah, yeah, something there. So I decided to go give that a go, but I was like, I'm going to talk to the naturopath just to make sure I'm going to do the right thing, and I don't want to try all their products and make sure they give me a bit of a, bit mm. of a protocol. And then she's, she looks at my blood. She's like, oh, you're not optimal. We want you these numbers. I'm like, okay, someone actually knows where I want to be. Mm. So I'm just going to work with them and maybe my GP, maybe play my medication a little bit to try and get there. But hopefully with some of the support supplements, I won't need to up my medication. Hopefully my... That's awesome. It's so frustrating no, it to deal with that process with doctors though, like that. It's mm. so fucking annoying. Yeah. That stuff drives me bonkers. Oh, just being in the fitness industry and getting fat is not, not fun. But it was interesting because I was powerlifting. Everyone thought I was bulking. Yeah. Everyone's just like, oh, you're, getting, you're looking strong. You're looking, looking bulky. Thick. Yeah. Or people asking like, are you okay? Are you emotionally okay? Because you just... <laughs> and also the worst thing is um, at this time I was going through like a really bad breakup. My skin was fully broken out because of the thyroid i was gaining so much weight and it was not a not a fun mix <laughs> fuck no how'd you deal with that though because like that's a a shit ton to happen at once obviously you got stressed and led to the thyroid issues but how do you just deal with people commenting constantly uh i think once i found out it was thyroid it was good to kind of have a reason mm-hmm. like it was good to be like okay it's not me it's i can blame it on something else that wasn't me because I always thought as I'm a little bit of a control freak so I'm kind of no, not at all <laughs> so I was constantly blaming myself for it all and then once I could finally could say it's not me it's this thing mm. then uh, I could relax a little bit more having like a bit of an answer but yeah I think a lot of people were kind of commenting some people out of love uh, I could I definitely left I was training at fitness first at the time and I did leave that gym because there was a lot of bitchy females and I was one of the strongest girls in the gym and then just seeing my body weight kind of trickle up and I just didn't want to have to deal with that. So mm. I think, uh, yeah, I you just kind of deal with it. But I think just constantly trying to find an answer. You just focus on other things. You don't worry about what everyone else is thinking too much. You just kind of have your head on one goal. And now you're in a good range. Yeah, so I'm definitely in a range now and I'm on the right track. Have so you been every- able to use your journey to help other people or at least give them some advice or anything yeah whenever I meet people that have kind of going through a similar thing I've now got a bunch of like specialists and people I can kind of send them to of like trying to follow the same journey but yep. it's crazy no one really wants to take full control of their health they yeah. kind of say like oh my doctor said this and they put me on this and I'm like if I listen to the first it. doctor I talk to I would oh. be massive right now yeah, like fine. I couldn't imagine what it would be if I listened to the first doctor so and I actually liked that doctor she was cool she was like this cute little Indian lady and yeah. after that just completely cut but do you think I mean, I personally think, and this is my own personal opinion, um, but people to put too much faith in doctors. Yeah. Amen. Uh, like they, they just believe... They can be bad ones too. 
Yeah, like they're, they're, there's just way too much buy-in that you think they're the be-all and end-all of health, where I truly believe, like, as I said before, there is someone out there with the result we have or we want. Like, if I'm wanting to be the strongest person in the world, I'm going to go ask the strongest person in the world questions. How do I do that? And I feel like we need to kind of apply the same mentality with our own health. Like, and I'm talking health specifically. Like, if someone came and asked me about health, like... I'm probably the one... Oh, actually, no, I'm probably one of the better ones to ask because I've had so many issues. I've had to find the right way of doing things. And I think we need to adopt that mentality. How many doctors are sitting across from you when you're asking for help help with your health that probably are way less healthy than you at the same time? Yeah. It's It's funny, my favourite GP right now who prescribes me pretty much anything I want. I went to her originally to get a Uh, cortisone. Can I talk to her? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I went to her originally because I needed another cortisone in my shoulder for my jiu-jitsu injury. I had plenty of them. And when I was there, I was like, actually, I need to go see this endocrinologist. And she's just like, oh, I'll send you that and I'll give you this full blood panel. And then uh, she's like morbidly obese and she gives me whatever I ask her to give me and she's very supportive but it is a little bit interesting saying I need to lose weight and she's looking at me like "Uh uh-huh okay (laughs) I mean I guess I'm not really one to comment on that I just don't understand it like as you said before it's why wouldn't you want to be optimal well be optimal just take care of yourself like I've never understood that people just don't want to take control I guess that's the thing but why? People, like, people will eat unhealthy food when they know they shouldn't be I've seen your diet but people hey my diet <laughs> changed a lot <laughs> so <laughs> it used to be bad but then like again I got to a point where that couldn't happen anymore yeah and I I don't know if it's just that people haven't gotten to that point there like yourself it took you you know unfortunately 25 kilos of weight gain for you to go I need to really yeah. find this answer yeah. Well, when I first got into jiu-jitsu and training, I lost about 25 kilos and I loved being like leaner and smaller. It was like my body was like one of my favorite things. Then having it just reversed on me was was one of the worst things that can happen. Especially when you've been big. So I've been chubby like my whole life, my whole teenage life. And then finally being like in a really healthy weight. I wouldn't say skinny. I was quite, I had decent amount of muscle. I was fit. And then having that just taken away from you, you really want to you fight to get it back. But how much of that whole process has now made you a better coach and made you a better entrepreneur because you've had to find ways of dealing with all this stuff. It's definitely made me a lot more understanding with people when it comes to weight loss. I've realized that it's not just, it gets me a little bit mad with a lot of weight loss things and weight loss challenges because I'm like, everyone's different. Like Mm. if I enter any basic weight loss thing, I've been to so many like different dietitians over the years and they're like, oh, just do this diet and I'll do their diet exactly and it wouldn't work out. I'm like, not everyone is the same. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that come to me now with weight loss, I'm like, you can lose weight doing this, but there's also like you could be in this area. So I have a lot of women that are a lot older come to me. I'm like, it's going to be a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's not just that easy. Journey for them. Yeah. And it's hard to explain to people like everyone's different. Like some people it's going to take years. Other people it could take six weeks. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's like if, if you're promoting an eight week weight loss program, <clears throat> yeah. fuck off. <laughs> well, before I went through all this, I would have definitely been like, get this in eight weeks like i would have mm. definitely seen it like that but until you go through your it's own journey you realize yeah, yeah you realize eight weeks is nothing i still stand by it if you're promoting an eight week fat loss program fuck off yeah. was eight kilos in eight weeks money back fuck off <laughs> <laughs> it just i just think that but it's it takes a conscious shift of the whole industry and i truly believe that like if we all like what is the, what's the saying um the rising tide. Rising tide raises all boats. That's the one. Like if if. Did you understand that? Yeah, no, I did. But like that's the thing. If, if we all get better, everything gets better. Yeah. And it's not it's not about me being better than you. It's not about you being better than me. It's just this whole industry needs to change for the better. And don't get me wrong, there's heaps of good, and there's a lot of good people out there mm. doing great things for it. But you know, we see it, and because we're in it, I think we're exposed to a lot more. Just the shit. And like, I know that's a bit of a tangent, but you know, it's, I remember talking to you along this journey, the amount of information that you've had to shift through and, and I've been there through the shit and it's like, that's terrible. Yeah. Why is that even a thing? And it's just, it's just appalling, but then I guess it also gives light to the people who are doing well yeah. because now you've learned something, you know, you can say that doesn't work. Yeah, definitely. I think more people need to just take control of their own health and then just mm. Don't stop at one answer. If you don't think it's right and you, you're going to question it, then actually kind of search to you but find I think the that's answer. The, no, you said it right there. Question it. Yeah. Question it. Don't accept it. Yeah. Like, question it. Will this work for me? Will this fit my lifestyle? Like, 
you live probably one of the most hectic lifestyles ever, dude. Like, since the age of 16, you have just been probably non-stop in something or pursuing something. Like, mm. you need something that's going to work within your own lifestyle. Like, what time do you start of a day? Uh, I wake up at four every day. Every I, day? Yeah, every day. Even if I don't have to, I'll wake up at four. Damn, like a rooster. Yeah. Nice. Well, I, don't, I actually don't enjoy it. I hate waking up at four. I set my alarm outside my bedroom just so I have to sleep wow. out <laughs> to go and turn it off. And I tell myself I'm not getting back into bed. So Even on day off. off. Even on day off. Damn, you're a savage. Yeah, just go I'm jump in the shower. I'm on day off. You've got good morning routines, though. Yeah, I try. If I have time, I try and now do more yoga. And like, so for years, I think when we first started training together, you kept telling me I need to meditate. I've heard that a million times that I need to meditate. So it's one of the best things when you have stress-induced like thyroid issues is you have to meditate. But I physically can't. I still can't. I've done all the meditation challenges. Mm -hmm. I've done the float tanks. I've done all the apps, all the programs. And it's just not for me. But I've found now doing yoga and breathing and has definitely helped. And that's what I think I, I, the same thing. It's, it's about, it's not necessarily meditation of sitting on a yoga mat. It's fucking meditation for you. It's exactly something that creates mindfulness in the moment. And yoga would be one of the most perfect things yeah. because you have to bring your focus and intention to what you're doing in that present moment, how you're moving, how your body is. And you could, be, could develop this awareness of where your body is in space. And that creates mindfulness. That creates and brings your attention into something and one soul focus. That's meditation. Yeah. Like, I don't I, fucking meditate sitting on a mat. Like, I can't even cross my legs without getting uncomfortable. That's kind of how I always pictured you you'd meditating, actually. Really? Yeah. I, if I meditate, I'm honestly, it's either I'm laying on my back on the floor of my office with my headphones in my feet up, because that's where I'm most comfortable, or I'm training. Like, training is the same thing with the yoga. Like, I have to bring my focus, my breath, into one specific activity yeah. where it forces me to be actually present in the moment. And that's what being mindful and mindfulness meditations based around so i believe that you can be practicing or med being meditate whatever the fuck you want to call it in whatever space you want as long as it brings that intent and focus to that one activity yeah like if you're meditating on a mat and you can the only focus you can have is the fucking tv on in front of you or something else in the back with cars driving but you're not meditating mm. go fuck off like just and then I post on social media. That's another tangent. Don't start me. <laughs> but my point is, like, it's about finding what works for you. Yeah. And you've, and you've clearly found it. Well, I always used thought jiu-jitsu was that thing that I could focus on and that was my mindful activity until I realized that it was the thing that was putting me into fight or flight. <laughs> yeah, because you've got another human dictating. Yeah. <laughs> a really stressful moment there. Yeah, yeah it was, I used to find it because I used to just, you don't think of anything else but that moment. But then when I realized my body was in constant fight or flight mode, mm. I realized it's probably, but it's also, wasn't it's the relaxing thing for me. Because you can't really control, like you can't control the outcome necessarily. Yeah. Like there's another external, like, God, Imagine Johnny laid on me, man. That'd be fucking hard. I He's heavy. You'll, you'll like that, though. You would. I like would it. love to have Johnny lay on me. I Platform exclusive. <laughs> tight and close. <laughs> Our podcast ends up there way too much, <laughs> but oh, in Lord. a good sense. But now, what's next for you? What's on the cards for Tier and the business? And where do you see yourself? Obviously, COVID's changing things. Six more businesses. What else are we own? So obviously, it depends on. Hopefully, we do not lock down again. That is uh, going to determine a few things. Although lockdown was good. I actually lost quite a bit of weight over lockdown because I was relaxed yeah. and I wasn't stressed mm. and I wasn't working and I wasn't fighting people. So I was uh, surprisingly quite relaxed. I was walking and doing yoga. So lockdown wasn't the worst experience. It's actually quite enjoyable. So next, the goal is to open up more studios mm -hmm. um, if you know we don't lock down. But I don't think we should in Queensland. And mm. then just go from there. I want to get to 25 within the next few years. Mm. And then <laughs> come back to powerlifting. Come back to powerlifting, yeah. And we said the same thing. I want to get to my black belt in jiu jitsu. I've been training jiu jitsu yeah, now yeah. eight years, eight and a half years. Fuck it. So a lot of people do get their black belt, black belt by this point, but I have taken off so much injury time. I think I'm one of the most injured people at my gym. I seem to be prone to injuries. Mm. Just I can't go on the mat without injuring something or someone landing on me or falling on me. And then uh, so get my black belt in jiu jitsu and then hopefully get as strong as possible. I, all I heard was coming back to power. That's awesome. <laughs> now, you are actually one of the probably most boss people I know, and you keep, like, I, I personally find you really inspiring because of what you do and what you've done in the last 12 years. So keep doing that. But before we wrap up, Oof. here yeah, are the have... 10 questions. Now, I'm, I want to stress to the listeners, she did not cover her ears in the last episode. I'm when still going to be terrible anyway. 
I but know. I think it's the same question she did on the last podcast that you released online. So, yeah, I mean, we change them every ten episodes. But are you ready? Rapid fire. Biggest lesson you've learned? Uh, always find an expert. Don't stop at one. Ooh. If you could live underwater, would you? Yes. Fuck yes. Oh really? Oh, well, when I was little, I always wanted to be a mermaid. So if, oh, I, can yeah, be, yeah, so. if I can be a mermaid, you can. You can be team. whatever you want to be. Yes. What's your biggest challenge? Uh, at the moment, probably my thyroid has always mm-hmm. been my biggest challenge or having to build a business through COVID. Mm. Yeah. Now, I want you to really think about this before you answer. Oh, is this the cereal soup yeah. one? Yeah, is cereal a soup? <laughs> I pushed it if for it you. If it isn't, why not? <laughs> and if it is, why is it? I'm going to say it's not soup but because why? of what my definition of what soup is. What it's is it? Usually, it's usually like either, it could be hot or cold liquid, but it's usually vegetable based. Thank you. Whoa. You've never had vegetable based um, cereal? Cereal, no. And no, you shouldn't. That I don't want that shit. disgusting. <laughs> yeah, like legitimately. Sorry if you're vegan. Oh, but something there. awesome I've done recently is you make like a really creamy protein shake and pour it on top of cereal instead of milk. Mm-hmm. That is so good. I feel like uh, when you say that's been that's a th- that's been a thing for a while. I've only just been introduced <laughs> to this. It is a game changer. <laughs> what conspiracy theory do you think is real? I don't really dabble too much in conspiracy theories because it's a rabbit hole that you mm. really go into. But I do like the idea of aliens. I kind of hope there is aliens, and I mm. do like the simulation theory. So oh, you've, seen, you've done some Rogan. Um, <laughs> would you join a cult? Um, more than likely, I probably wouldn't know that I was in a cult if I was in a cult. Mm. But if it's like a really good one, yeah, probably. Sounds like fun. What? What's one of your rules? Hmm. I don't know if I should use the expert one again. That kind of... Oh, take, take full control of my health. Ooh, well, good one. I, know, I think you know this one. How many chickens to kill an elephant? <laughs> Is there an actual answer to this? Well, it's what the, Anton suggested 75. We He's actually, probably the most dangerous person. If you're asking if Johnny knows the answer, no. Should I'm we, not sure if it's Should we see tested. if it's an actual answer? Well, we can do that, but what's your answer? Mm. Uh, I'm going to have to say... Well, last week's I'm going to say, like, it depends. What's the quality health of this elephant? Is it's this a quality like, elephant. Is this African, like a is this big, like a big male elephant? elephant? Yeah, I'm going to say a, a fair few hundred. I'm thinking, is he asleep or awake? No, he's awake. He's angry and aggressive. He's getting chickens nearby. He knows what's coming. Hmm. I'm going to say a couple hundred. A couple hundred? Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, your life is a video game. What cheat code would you like? Uh, the ability, ability to never have to sleep. Bam. But always be awake. <laughs> like that. Now, um, you've just been arrested. What does your fi- family assume you've been arrested for? So first of all, I think it's a mistake. But... <laughs> <laughs> Pleading not but guilty it, already. But then if they start thinking about it, they will probably say I probably got in a fight or we nick could choke someone or, or <laughs> took the blame for someone else. Lovely. That's, that's the best. Mate, you are an absolute fucking baller and a boss lady in every sense of the world. Word. And world, world. but I'll take world. <laughs> what? Where can people find you if they want to reach out about your journey, ask questions? So Instagram is Tia Marks. My name is what T I A E. My mum made it up to confuse everyone, and so no. actually, yep. So all my She's siblings have made up names. We all have made up spelling names, so we all have unique spellings, That's which is really good in the age of social media and internet. So I always get my email or yeah. username for everything. So it works well. But I'm also extremely easy to stalk. So online dating, always have to drop the E. Otherwise, you'll always find me online. Um, so two marks <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, YouTube is Strong Happy Healthy and Facebook is Strong Happy Healthy. <laughs> and do not watch that underwear video, please. No, we're putting that link up in please the show notes as well. It is terrible. It is the worst video in the world. I don't even know. You, if we wouldn't even make the whole way through. It's terrible. But, um, but 4.6 million views. Well, the worst thing is um, one of the reasons why I stopped YouTubing was because I was waiting for my YouTube to get verified so I can start making money from it. And I'm watching that video go viral. I'm like, don't go viral yet. So wait till I get my own thing. So I was supposed to make, um, I think it was supposed to be close to like $10,000 from those views. But I only ended up making like just under 1000 from it because it went viral before I got, oh. yeah. So, but it's still, you know, it might have another spike. So. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. once we well, reach exactly, yeah, pretty you know. much. Woof. to the moon. <laughs> There's nothing sexual about that video, nothing at all. Uh, except the creeps who are now messaging you for. Yeah, people are like, she doesn't even show them. Like, make a second one. Let's see him. It's just very. Make one with Brando. Um, and then he Yeah, or we can have uh, 
underwear to wear. Yeah, strong happy healthy underwear. No, strong happy healthy underwear worn by Brandon mm. that we can then sell. Look, it would go like because I know. <laughs> anyway, that's a digress. Jonah's going to buy more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this will come out in a couple of weeks and we thank you so much for coming on and giving us your time this afternoon. You're <laughs> no a legend. Problem. Thanks, guys. We clap. Three, two, one. You're not eating donuts. Aren't you gluten-free and Yeah, 100%. Health and- I, I, I allow myself one thing per week. That's a good way to mess up your gut. Fucking mm. oath it is.